Hey guys, Tack Doodle again, going over a couple of my favorite EDCs. This has actually come up in a lot of videos. You guys ask me in the comments what I personally carry every day. So I decided to do a little quick pickup video and show you a little bit about what I use on a day-to-day -day basis. If you go back and watch the holiday series where I talk about gifts that don't suck, you'll notice a bunch of the things that I like using, like erasers, pens, all that stuff's going to apply here. I'll show you a couple extra things. I know you guys care about the metal and the cool stuff that goes bang, so we're going to touch mostly on that. Before you really look at what I carry all the time, you have to realize that, again, I have no professional expertise about anything, at least nothing that matters, so I would ignore pretty much anything I say. As far as using it for just pure didactic purposes and figuring out what you personally like, go ahead. But keep in mind, all opinion, no expertise. So when I do stuff, you kind of have to look at the situation that I'm in. I have access to a lot of the TNP weaponry, and I can carry a lot of that. But the thing that really comes down to whether or not I carry it is going to be size, concealability, and if I even have a carry system for it. Because a lot of the guns that we have, they may fit a certain style, but I'm not necessarily going to go out and spend like 80 bucks on each holster just so I can start carrying that. So it takes a lot longer for me to adapt something into my system. So you'll see the actual go-tos that I have in here, the ones I use a lot. There's pretty much a roster that I stick to. Weight does come into play, but only when it makes my jeans sag, so it shows my ass crack. Don't really like doing that so much. But I do carry stuff like the PPK. This is actually, I did touch on this already about why and how I carry it. But you'll notice that even though it's heavier and it is full steel, I do like carrying it because it's slim and it doesn't have the hard angular profile that some of these other ones do. So if it pokes out and kind of, you know, sits under a t-shirt and gives some weird poses, you're not going to notice as much as you would something that's more obviously gun looking. It kind of has that aspect. I like its classiness. It's just, it's more of an heirloom to me. I do carry it and I risk it, I know, but the probability of me having to kill someone on any given day is about one in one million. So for the other 999,000 days, I'll just go ahead and carry a PPK. That way I can add wear. There have been a lot of things throughout my life where I've had it and I've loved them, you know, like Microtech knives. I just keep it in the safe instead of ever using it. And after a while, I start looking at it as more of an investment. And I know once I get to that point with anything, I need to start looking at selling it because if I'm not using it and it's not providing value and it's not appreciably investing for me, I don't know. I'll just get rid of it and swap it for something I do use. But PPK is one of my go-tos. So is the PF9. I've used PF9s for a long time. I tend to trust them, but that's just from my experience. I have seen, like in the pocket pistol shootout, if you check that, LC9 had some funky jams. I haven't had any happen with me. Again, that's one that's mostly determined by my carry system. I have holsters for LC9s, not so much the other stuff. I carry the PPK a lot, but it's more for the times when I do want something semi-auto and more rear carrying. If you want to know the most common gun I carry, it's actually a pocket revolver. Usually I'm stuck between the Ruger LCR and the Airweight series by Smith & Wesson. I love both of them. They're both really light, and the thing that gets me is they're so maneuverable. It's not so much an out-of-pocket thing as it is in. If you look at this, this is actually my go-to holster for the Ruger LCR. This one I actually carry, and I'm sure I'm going to get some kind of flack for this. I carry it in the front. It kind of fits within that great little paunch area that guys tend to have. You know how your gut just kind of like, Wah! comes out, and then you can kind of put this handle in there. It's like invisible, and it doesn't have nearly the visual impact of a fanny pack. I'll stick it inside the waistband. I have it tucked in there in the holster, belt over it. It's just really easy for me to conceal. There's really only one time I've ever had a problem with that. It was when I was doing my last medic cert, when I was going in for my intermediate, advanced, whatever they want to call us now. Uh, I went in and I had it front carried like usual because I was just, it was a night class going, you know, place to place all through the day. And so I didn't really want to have to stash my gun, get all that stuff scored away. So instead I had this front carried, just like right over my belt buckle, everything's tucked properly. And we had to do the big old stretcher, you know, maneuverability things. And so they're talking about power lunges and blah, blah, blah. So basically you have to grab the stretcher, hook it onto your belt, and then lift it up. Which, and again, this is the only time I've ever had a problem with, you know, the nutsack carry method. I had it there, and I had the entire class looking at me, and they're like, go on. I'm like, I know how to do this. I've done it numerous times. But I had to grab it and <laughs> basically drop it on top of this. So I had like a 200 pound stretcher with, you know, 200 pounds of dude on it resting on top of this, which was resting on my already stressed belt at this point and just ramming it into my junk. And that was not comfortable at all. 
Otherwise, I like front carry. It's pretty secretive, especially I'm like going to college and doing lab classes and stuff. When you're sitting there like bending over scales, grabbing stuff, it's just hard to keep your shirt tail tucked all the time and be very sure about where it is. I don't like having to worry about that. And while it may be legal and, you know, within my rights to carry wherever I am, it's still not a conversation I want to have with people because it's just irritating. I'm not going to go out and evangelize every time and convince everyone I have an argument with that my point of view is right. It usually just burns bridges and then we both end up irritated and then I have to find a new lab partner. It's a pain. So, I like to be secretive. If you look at the stuff and uh, everything that I carry, you'll notice I'm also pretty secretive with blades. There are some guys in public where they'll just grab it out and they're like, Yeah, I have a blade. Look at me being utilitarian. Again, not really my thing. If I do have something like a stray thread, I'll bring it out like that. I keep it really low, close to the body, and I'll even just open the blade like that, cut a little bit, and then close it, not, you know, risking any fingers. I just like to be subtle that way. Uh, so the LCR gets a lot of play with me. Again, it's a lot owing to its size, its weight, its form, and the fact that you can conceivably shoot it from a jacket pocket, which doesn't really matter to me, but for some reason I like thinking about it that way. It's just really easy to carry for me. I wish I had a holster system for the S&W Airweight. I'm pretty sure this is a 636, I want to say. I love it. This one does have the laser grips, the CTCs on it. I like lasers for visual impact. It's easy to kind of minimize the whole making a sight picture thing. Some of the purists don't really like it. They say it's, you know, breeds bad habits, blah, blah, blah. I don't really care. If I'm going to a gunfight, I'll cheat as much as possible. That's just the way it is. Now, if I'm ever at the point where I do have to present it, I'd rather have a laser. That's just me. So, PPK touched on that, uh, PF9, those are my main ones. The rest is all kind of gravy. Before we go any further, I want to toss in a nice little plug for less lethal options. Not so much as a replacement for a firearm, but as an adjunct. There's a big difference between just spraying someone down with pepper water in the eyes and blowing them away with a 357. There's a really big gap there that you can effectively bridge with a lot of different less lethal options that act as deterrence to crime. If you think about it, it's kind of unreasonable to just defensively carry in terms of protecting your life, and that's it. Because there's a lot of crime between just existing peacefully and killing somebody. You know, what do you do about thieving, about, I don't know, mugging, any of those kind of gray area things? Would you feel good about shooting somebody in that situation? Maybe not. If you don't, it's nice to have that leeway of using something like pepper spray, OC, tasers, batons, any of that stuff. I personally like carrying the tiny cans of pepper spray at the little purse size. I like that. These you can just toss in a pocket, go about your business. Don't confuse it for chapstick when you're trying to like bring it up to your face. It's unpleasant. This one is actually my ideal size. It's like big enough to use. Bright yellow, you can kind of get an idea what it is. It's just a little deterrent and it has a little more area effect in front of you than maybe some of the other options. Batons, other people swear by them. I don't really carry them. I had a lot of friends in high school that used to buy cheesy ones at pawn shops and they'd go and get in fights and beat the ever-living hell out of each other. I've seen some nasty stuff with them. They're effective, just personally I'm not as good with them and I don't trust myself not to lose it against, you know, multiple guys if I'm trying to make an exit. It's fairly likely they'll end up taking it and using it to, you know, beat my kneecaps out. And I like using my kneecaps, surprisingly enough. So I like stuff that builds range. More than anything, honestly, I evade. If there's a chance, probably more than 30% that I'm actually going to get in some kind of big fight, I generally won't go or I'll just figure out a way to get around it. I don't know. And that's a real 30%. I'm talking if there are 10 straws in a bucket, I pick out one of those three. I'm getting my ass handed to me at best. I don't really like those odds. Not like the 30%, hey, how badly do you want a pepperoni pizza tonight? Yeah, about 30%. Very different stats there. I like C2 tasers. This is what nothing swears by. Also, I do like the less lethal option like uh, OC, being able to engage multiple people because it's rare that you have someone who's just, you know, up to no good alone. In my experience, they generally travel in packs, so it doesn't really make sense if you have to tase one guy to have to sit there, wait, you know, maybe change into another. It's just a lot. At that point, you probably do transition your firearm or book it as quick as you can. I never understand those advertisements in gun mags where it has like one dude alone in an alley surrounded by eight guys like he just got jumped by a bunch of ninjas. I mean, first of all, why is he going down that alley? It's full of nothing but dumpsters. Second of all, why do all these guys care so much? I mean, what's the guy going to have at most like 200 bucks, a couple 20s? That's not a very big take for nine dudes. So excluding all of my less lethal options, I do kind of have some mental classes of different carry levels that I do. 
My main ones are going to be, you know, Airweight, the PPK, the LCR. Moving up just a little bit is going to be stuff like the PF9, the XDS, the Walther PPS, I think, the M&P Shield. Those are a little bit bigger, and they kind of bridge that gap between a small carry pistol like the P3AT, any of the small 380s that I used to carry, moving up to the, you know, 9 mil single stack crowd. Some of them are bigger than others. The PF9 I have carried for a long time. I already said I'm comfortable with that. I don't mind it. XDS is kind of newer. I do love the XDS. It shoots really well. I just, well, right now I don't have a carry system. But it is just a little big for me, for at least how most of my carry goes. You can see from this, this is big, but I can conceal it in a lot of different places. This is heavier, so I can't really carry it in my jacket or any of that because it starts lopsided, and then I got to even out the weight. Then it's a whole you know weight shift thing that I have to deal with. A lot of hassle for me. I am looking into getting a holster set up for one of these. For me personally, I would, at least at this time, I would carry either the XDS or the Walther PPS. PPS is a little bit bigger. That thing shoots amazingly. I'm really good with it, and it does kind of recoil softer for me than this does. Normally not a big deal, but remember I did kind of break my hand in three paces along here, so I'm still healing that up. Yesterday I shot with this, and it kind of still hurts today. I still have a big old bone callus that I'm getting over, so I don't know how long that's going to last. I just like the kind of lighter, softer stuff, like that Walther. I'm really able to send more rounds into the same area because it just feels softer. I think part of that's that adjustable backstrap on it. Just preference, although I probably will end up carrying this XDS soon if I can figure out a holster system for it. I like that size. Honestly though, when I'm left with a lot of these decisions, I look at the XDS, the Shield, the PPS, the PF9, and I start to think, well, if I'm carrying this large and this big of a footprint, I might as well just go to the Glock. You know, I can carry this. It's not dimensionally very different. It's really similar to it. And you get that double stack 9, the Glock mag compatibility. A lot of that stuff really works in your favor. As long as it feeds, test it with the different magazines. Sometimes 26s don't like the longer ones. Depends. At least in theory, it'd be cool to just have, like, I don't know, a 33 rounder on you. It may be crazy, but kind of nice. I don't know. That's just my thing. I do like carrying the 226. This one has, I think it's A grip on it. It's this feltish kind of stuff. I love it to death. Extended slide release. All that. It just makes for a great, great carry gun. There does come a time, though, when I pick up something like the XDS, the Shield, the PPS, and I start to think, why not go to a Glock 26? Because if you look at the form factor, it's not that much bigger than these are. And you do kind of have this weight bloat phenomenon where you start out with something like an LCR or a PPK, and you go, well, I think I'll just go from a PPK to, you know, let's say a PF9. Well, it's not that much bigger. You know, it's not a big size difference between these two. So next thing you know, you're carrying a PF9. Well, what do you do next? Well, I think I'm going to go from a PF9. I think I'll just carry the XDS. It's like barely bigger. They're pretty much the same size. But next thing you know, you're carrying an XDS. And you go, hey, what about a Glock 26? I get double stack then. I get all the access to my Glock mags. I get all that legendary reliability. It's about the same. It's not way different. The thickness is a bit thicker, but you do get that double stack into it. Next thing you know, you're at a Glock 26 and you're looking at it going, well, I think I can carry something bigger. Why not do a PPQ? Keep in mind, this one has a threaded barrel option on it, so it's bigger than the normal one. Okay, so you get to the PPQ, you think, oh, I can carry something else. Well, I'm already at full size. Might as well go to a 1911. Then you have a 1911, and then you freaking put a laser module on it. It's this bloat phenomenon. You just end up with something so big you can't even manage it. It just depends on how you're carrying it. So for me, in a lot of these cases, I do love the PPQ, and I don't carry it because the only system we have for it is the Galco Classic Light. Nothing loves that Classic Light, and I do not like it. It just doesn't work for me. Keep in mind, he's a lot bigger than I am. I'm about 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, I got like a 40-inch chest here. So when I carry something like that, you're going to see this big old bulge sitting through and I'm like sitting at desks and stuff. I can't find something that carries deep and well enough to just look like it's a part of me, especially in the summer. I'm not really going to be able to get away with something like that. He has a lot more real estate on his body. <laughs> so he can get away with carrying this bigger stuff without noticing, especially when you wear like some plaid camouflage that kind of conceals the sizes and shapes just harder to do it for the younger people. So when I get to the point where I have to carry something bigger, let's say I do want to carry PPQ, I start looking at off-body carry. 
Off Body Carry has a whole school of thought to it. To me, I keep it simple. I keep it accessible, I keep it ready, I keep it safe, which means a holster, you wanna keep that trigger covered, and I make sure that that bag pretty much never leaves my person. If it does, there have been rare instances, I get to know an area, part of my routine, I'm like, okay, I'm at this desk every day, and then I find like a little luggage lock kind of system. I'll just do something simple on it, keep an eye on it no matter what. When I do off-body carry, it does kind of open up a bigger world of opportunity for me. So, no joke, this is actually what I had yesterday. If you want to see what I did carry, it was a TRR-8. So, yeah, kind of a big deal. A lot bigger than any of these. I do love it. Very comfortable with it, really nice to shoot. When you start doing off-body carry, and in this case, I was just on my way out to class, and I was like, hey, I'm gonna be sitting in the lecture hall for like an hour and a half then a study hall. I'm just going to wear my bag on me the whole time. This is a 511 messenger bag. I think it's the Rush Delivery or something like that. This has a little pocket in the rear. It's Velcro sealed. It's got like a Velcro area inside to do a holster too, I assume. Self-closes with that Velcro and then you can zip it closed. When I've had to lock it before, I've done it in the main compartment, gotten it, you know, in a separate case, a pistol case, kind of like a... Uh, something like that. That way I can keep it. Either way, it's always under supervision. If anyone gets close to it, I start moving to intercept because you never know what people think is in there. If it's just a lock, they may think it's like a useful laptop or something. Little did they know it's a custom shop Smith & Wesson. You kind of get into this weird funk though because once you figure out that, hey, I can carry a TRA, you start thinking about all the other stuff you can actually carry and then things go downhill quick. As far as the actual sieve carry, I do like to have a couple different things on me. I'll kind of run through those really quick because it is so cold out here and my hands are going numb. The everyday stuff I use, I actually do this. This is a pocket protector. Oh wait, maybe this is a mil-spec bag. Either way, I do like pocket protectors. I put this on a little lanyard. This is what I put my pass in for public transit. I do like the messenger bag for mass transit because I can actually carry on my lap. So I'll have it sitting there, you know, if I'm sitting on a bus or a train, you're like bouncing around. You can kind of just put it on your waist. First, you can hide accidental erections. So you got that going for you. Second of all, you can put your hand in that concealed carry pocket. You're ready for anything. There have been some iffy times. You always know when those are, when you catch like the late 11 p.m. train back and then you're kind of stuck there. Yeah, it's nice being prepared. It's easier to conceal something there than it is a backpack. I always have like Kleenexes and stuff, especially in the winter. Everyone's always sneezing and stuff. Gross. I like to keep a couple good napkins for when just weird crap falls on you, like bird schnapps and all that. As far as the actual, you know, carry carry stuff, um, gum, that's a necessity. Light, any kind of pen that you like, I would take two or three of those. I prefer index cards for writing stuff down. If you look, these are the little cultural references I do. Like when I hear something that I think would make a funny joke or something that I should know, I'll write it down, I'll look it up later. Stuff on this is like the Witch of Endor, the Etymology of Gilding, the Lily, D.B. Cooper, Versa Peliche, stuff like that. You just write down, makes you a more versatile human being. Uh, this is actually no-dose for those times when you have to wake up early and you have like a 6 a.m. lab and you're sitting there just half asleep. I like being prepared for that too. Uh, zip ties, always have zip ties in there. Alcohol swabs are pretty much my best friend. You can get these anywhere for like a buck fifty for three hundred. They're awesome. I like to get the one ply ones. They have a little more juice in them. They don't, you know, wear out as easy. Usually they just do a little two ply that's folded over crap. Worthless. I hate those. Mm, this is I think called a note board. This is some dude on Reddit who made it. This I do like for college when I'm doing stuff. I don't really like the dry erase thing. I like more of the uh, whatever it is Visa V markers. Then you can wipe them off if you need to with alcohol swabs. That lets you do some of those group projects when you all have to get together and like figure stuff out. It's just a big old surface that you can unfold. It's the size of an index card. It folds out to about like this. It's like five bucks or something from his website. The guy seems pretty cool. You just fold it out, get to town, you can write all your stuff. It's helpful for doing conceptual maps if you're that type. Uh, what else? It's just one of those cases that I got. Cliff bar, always good to have something for when you're hungry, if you get like, you know, starving over the course of a day. Multi-tool, it always changes generally, just a cadet. I like those, they work for me. So I have the body bag. Erasers, I've already talked about those. The Pentels, they're awesome, amazing, get some. If you wear contacts like I do, I actually have my glasses in here, and before you laugh, these are all function. 
If I could, I would just get some like wraparounds because I hate the fishbowl effect with tiny lenses where you have to move your whole head to look at what you're trying to see. These are as big as I could possibly find for, again, my fat head. These have the old guy librarian like dangle thing. Not only do they hang around my neck when I take them off, but I can actually tighten them in my face so they're like almost bird eye and sideways. Love it. Look like a 96 year old retiree, but I do not care because I can see better that way. I usually wear contacts pretty much all the time. Calculators, everyone has one of these, uh, whatever it is, it's like a TI-83X or something. The oldest piece of technology that still sells for its full retail price. I don't know why. I don't really like it so much. I mean, most places will check your calculator now to make sure you don't have any notes in it before you go into a test, so. Yeah, doesn't really help for that. I do carry more often, this is a Casio FX115ES. I was surprised by how much I ended up liking this calculator, and it was allowed on most of my college tests last year at least. It has like a natural display, blah blah blah. Look it up online. I came to really like it. I liked it even more than the TI-34 that I used to use. It's pretty cool. I would always recommend one of these. You know, the clipboard, metal. You can use it as a ruler and a straight edge, especially if you get one that has like the measurements built into the side. It's a lot more useful than you'd think. I've always wondered if I could sharpen one because I used to have a metal ruler in school that I sharpened out so I could actually just turn it on its side and I would start using it to cut stuff out after I would line up edges on it. That was pretty cool. I don't know what else you could do with it. I guess just smack it really loudly on things. Although I have done that with this a lot and this one's bent. You can use that for a lot of stuff. As far as notes go, I actually prefer plain paper. If you look, this is how I write. I just start out with a blank sheet. I can use all of it and go through. I usually use like old copy paper that I have other class notes on. Yeah, because I'm nice about it. What else is in here? Recorder. IP, I don't know. PX720. This one, I use it rarely to record lectures. Most of the time you have some guy in your class that's putting it on YouTube anyways. That's always convenient. Stapler, at least in this case, in case you have those, you know, last minute, oh crap, I gotta do this, and then rushes to the front, all 300 people in the lecture hall, that sucks. Oh, look at that, extra mag for Glock 26. So that's what's there. Uh, I got a lot of stuff, I, mean, I hate having to go through it all. I already said, I like writing on index cards. I like Orbit, I don't really like this kind that comes in the crinkly stuff, because it's so loud. I like the little paper wrap bubble mint, that's my favorite. Lens cleaning cloth, very useful. Be surprised we need it. That's also why I kind of like to have cheap optics and eyeglasses and all that stuff I don't have to worry about. I think that's about it. Other than that, you can see I even put like little loop Velcro sides on this to make it quieter when I'm opening and closing. It just has two little things on the bottom. 511 bag's really awesome. You have all these Molly attachments. So if I do this, I'm usually carrying in the rear pocket there. Just keep it on your person all day, know what you're doing. For me, I like figuring out my class schedule or however I'm going to work or, you know, etc. I figure that out, then I start devising a carry situation for that. Otherwise, I'll go in something that's pretty low impact, like an LCR, keep it in the front, keep it hidden, good to go. There is some other stuff that I kind of just threw in here. For my actual EDC kit, generally music is a part of it, especially if I'm going to school. This is my little iPod brick that I got, Velcro together, a little Seamoy amp in there, FIO cable, yeah, FIO. I bring extra batteries for it, anything battery powered, have extras, or at least a charger if you're going out and about all day. This I usually toss in this side pocket, then I'll just run the cable up around my neck, have that ready. Uh, iPad, that's always part of it. Whatever tablet you use, I like doing that and then just having my data ready. It's easier for me to do my notes on there than it is a laptop, carry that around, open it up. Just a hassle. I like jump drives. Now that we have the ubiquitous tablets and all that, it's less necessary, but I used to always carry a set of executable open office, like copy trans, stuff like that, where I could just plug in and basically make it my own little mini desktop wherever I was. Falling out of favor, not as necessary now. I also like having some spare keys. I make these as jangly and as irritating as possible to carry, see how it's big. That means when I start using them, I will look for my originals as fast as I can because I hate using these. Just one way I can save myself. Uh, you can take your little lucky items, I don't know, another eraser I have. I'll roll in some of these. My favorite chapsticks, we live in a dry environment here, so I'm like always eating them away. I pretty much just have a giant, you know, Dementor-like hole right here. I've never seen the movies, I assume that's what they look like. This is, well I dropped it, but it's Nivea, Kiss of Moisture, whatever that stuff is, it's like blue. I don't know, I got a pack of Amazon, like 12s or something. I like those. Neutrogena, you can tell this one's been used a lot. TMP actually sent us some of this, totally turned me on to it, it's awesome. 
Uh, this is like Bath and Body Works or something. Back in the day, I had a girl that she always had this on her, so she gave me a tube. Ever since then, I've liked it. I bought like six one time, and I think I've just been trucking since then. Mm, I don't know. Blockbuster card, where are you going to be without that? On the days I don't use a messenger bag, I'll usually do my Camelback Alpine Explorer. I know there are better backpacks, but I don't have the bond of those that I do with this one. I mean, this thing's been mine since freaking, what, 17 or so? Been with me all kinds of adventures, and you can tell I just got all kinds of wear on it. I even have the bottom taped because it's worn through already. It's bleached out. It smells kind of funky, but it's mine. It's broken in. I love it. That's how I want all my gear. That's it for my EDC carry. Now you know what I like, now you know what I use. Use it to kind of tailor your own system, decide what's important to you, carry it comfortably. It's really important that you're carrying. Doesn't do you much good to drop a bunch of money on a $1,200, $1,911, $100 custom leather setup just to leave it at home every time you gotta go somewhere. There it is, that's the EDC update, at least for 2013. You may see some changes in the future. I'm probably gonna holster up either an XDS, PPS, one of those, so I'll let you know how that goes in the future. Thanks for watching. Remember to sub to my channel. A lot of the guys in the main one aren't really finding out where I'm at. It kind of helps me keep all this separated. These will keep posting in the main one for a while. We'll see how it goes from there. Thanks.